Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. We are going to discuss GATE 2019 material science questions which were asked in mechanical engineering. So let us proceed. First question is in a casting process a vertical channel through which molten metal flows downward from pouring basin to runner for reaching the mold cavity is called right so it is asking about see this is the pouring basin right initially liquid is over there and it flows through this path and then it goes to the runner and this is your runner and these are gates right so it is asking about this vertical por portion what is this vertical portion this is called as sprue right so the correct answer will be answer B. Okay. Now let us move. Next, which one of the following welding methods provides the highest heat flux? So which one is going to provide highest heat flux? We know heat flux is heat transferred per unit area. Right? means for a certain amount of area what is the amount of heat over there so we know that laser beam welding laser beam welding has the maximum power density power density that means the power is confined in a very small area so basically that means the heat will be also in a very small area concentrated in a very small area that's why the heat flux will be high so that's why the laser beam welding will be your correct answer. If you compare others like tungsten inert gas, plasma arc, oxyacetylene gas welding, then you will see the heat flux is basically lower. Means if you see after laser beam welding, we will find plasma, then we will find tungsten, then we will find oxyacetylene gas welding. Okay. Now, let us move to next question. Consider the stress strain curve. This is the stress strain curve which is given over here. For an ideal elastic plastic strain hardening metal as shown in the figure. The metal was loaded in uniaxial tension starting from O. Okay. Upon loading, the stress strain curve passes through the initial yield point. This is the yield point P. And then a strain hardens to point Q, okay, where the loading was stopped. After this, there was no loading. From point Q, the specimen was unloaded to a point R, okay, it was unloaded to point R, where the stress is zero. So it is completely unloaded, so stress is zero. If the same specimen is reloaded in tension from point R, the value of a stress HV, the material yields again is so we know that whenever we do deformation up in the plastic region this is your plastic region right and when we remove the load so what happens it follows the line parallel to the elastic line right during the relaxation so so at this point if suppose this is the strain, the total strain when testing was going on but when we uh, do the unloading then this amount of this delta epsilon this delta epsilon is the recovery which takes place right now this is the recovery now suppose we load it again so this will again follow the elastic part and this will follow up to the point Q and after this Basically, the plastic deformation will again start, right? So, this is the point Q 
which becomes the new ys that means new yield strength so this value is how much this is 210 mpa so basically this will start yielding at 210 mpa right okay next question match the following sand mold casting defects with their respective causes so what is the cause of that uh, of the defect see the first defect is blow hole then misrun then hot tearing then wash so blow holes you know blow holes are observed like something some kind of hole will be observed on the top surface so how these holes occur because when this gases try to escape leave, so when it is not able to escape during initial mold making so when we make a mold of sand then we heat it okay to remove the moisture but when it is not able to uh, remove the moisture completely so what happens when we pour molten liquid over there so since molten liquid has got high temperature the moisture which is present inside tries to come out but since initially the permeability was low that means the gas was not able to uh, move out or the water moisture was not able to move out so it is forced to move out so when this is forced to move out so it creates some kind of discontinuity on the surface because this marks the region where the gas has been moved out so the reason for is this is will be the poor permeability of the sand next is the misrun so misrun occurs like suppose uh, i am pouring from the two location this is the mold and from this location also i am pouring liquid and this location what happens when these two liquid try to come together you know because this will also flow and this will this will uh, fill the mold cavity whatever it is there so this will try to fill the mold cavity if suppose there is some kind of fluidity problem like the fluidity is very low that means it is imposing a very high amount of resistance to the flow so when this fluidity will be low that means the liquid will not able to flow towards each other with a sufficient speed so that creates uh, a basically junction between these two right these two type of liquid because it will take more time to reach and during that the heat will all heat will flow out from the molten metal and it will try to solidify before they touch each other okay so basically it is the problem of insufficient fluidity okay the next is the hot tearing now how does this hot tearing occurs now suppose this is the liquid which we have so when cooling takes place we know that when liquid transforms to solid it tries to contract right in most of the cases other than this grey cast iron grey cast iron we know it tries to expand but in all other cases generally all other cases it tries to contract so when it is trying to contract and this is the mold and this mold has got sand right now when it gets a surface this this is the sand surface so initially the heat transfer will take place at this position so this will be in a colder uh, region basically as compared to the middle portion so when this is in colder region so it tries to solidify right and after some time the inner region also tries to solidify and during this solidification what happens there is a contraction difference means uh, when this region tries to con uh, yeah, solidify then what happens this pulls the region at the wall right at the mold surface and suppose this mold material is not collapsible that means it is not going to break 
that means when it is not going to break then certainly there will be some kind of crack formation in the metal to accommodate this contraction suppose this mold was supposed to be broken during this pulling then what happens their crack would have formed in the mold only but not in the case of metal okay so because of this problem the hot tearing may occur okay so poor collapsibility next is the wash wash basically happens like suppose i am this is the mold right and this is the sand now i am putting liquid metal over here and this mold is so weak that due to the force of this molten metal this gets broken easily means during just pouring the metal this gets broken so that basically creates wash means washing away of the mold surface okay that is nothing but the mold erosion okay so p matches with 3 q matches with 4 and r matches with 1 and as message with 2 uh, so option d your correct answer okay guys so thank you